He was the son, as was thought, of Joseph, who was the son of Eli, who was the son of Mathai, who was the son of Levi, son of Melchi, son of Janai, son of Joseph, son of Levi, son of Amos, son of Nam, son of Hezli, son of uh, Nagai, son of Maath, son of Maath, uh, son of Semyon, son of Josak, son of Jonah, son of Jonan, son of Ressa, son of uh, Zerubbabel, son of Shetael, son of Nerai, son of Melchi, son of Adai, son of Kasim, son of Elmadad, son of Ur, son of Joshua, son of Eliezer, son of Joram, Son of Machah, son of Levi, son of Simeon, son of Judah, son of Joseph, son of Jonah, son of Eliakim, son of Malachi, son of Mena, son of Maathathathatha, something, son of Nathan, son of David, son of Jesse, son of Obed, son of Boaz, yada yada yada, there's a lot more I can't pronounce, son of Enos, son of Seth, son of Adam, son of God. We went from Jesus to God. We went through characters we just heard from there. So, uh, so you see where this is going. Um, the kids did okay. We're going to let you do the quiz uh, a little bit uh, here. Um, where were Eli and Naomi from? Oh, yeah. Bethlehem. Bethlehem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Uh, where did Boaz meet Ruth? That was her option. 
dangerous, a gross option. So instead, she took a chance. She traveled to a strange land. And once there, the Hebrew people, who had been wanderers themselves for generations, the very word Hebrew from the really, really old language, Akaru, who knows what it means? Wanderer. Wanderer. God, people listen sometimes so well. <laughs> Wanderer, gypsy, migrant, traveler. That's what the word Hebrew means. Hebrew, they're defined as those people. They've been wanderers, and God kept reminding them of that. Kept telling the Hebrews, you were like this, so you should treat uh, other people uh, well. You, should, you were an immigrant, so you should treat other immigrants well. You were a refugee, you should treat refugees well. So do you think that they uh, immediately welcomed Ruth when she got to Israel? No. No. They didn't welcome her. The Hebrew Bible says, the, the, the number one phrase in the Hebrew Bible is, do not fear. The number two uh, phrase in the Hebrew Bible is, welcome the stranger. And it says it about a gazillion times, because people are really bad at welcoming the stranger. If we were better at welcoming the stranger, God wouldn't have to say all the time, welcome the stranger. But God says that. And does keep reminding us, because there are always people, everywhere, every time, there are always people who look down on the stranger and blame the immigrant and tell lies about the other and try to keep out the traveler and get caught up in all sorts of evil between us and them. And God has never been on their side, not once, not ever, never will be. And yet, even if some people want to ignore God and hold on to their sense of, I don't even, I, I, I just search for a word, I don't know what that sense is, of hating the stranger. Even if some people are going to do that to such disastrous and disgusting ends to get themselves stuck in their own cages of fear and anger and racism and willful ignorance, even so, this is the good news. There are other people who are inspired by the light of God to find it in their hearts to welcome and care for and create conditions of love for the migrant people who God points out over and over, that's my priority. Those are the people I care about. Even if some people, yeah, let's, let's take another Bible story. Uh, even though there are kids in here, uh, I'm going to bring up the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Guess what? It's not about what you think it is. Uh, someone, centuries later, started layering on this other agenda onto the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, some other agenda about sexuality. It ain't there. It's not in the story. And the Bible, over and over and over, uh, talks about Sodom and says, the sin of Sodom is not welcoming strangers. It's over and The Bible says that, not me. So being uh, inhospitable, all hell breaks loose. Sulfur rains down from heaven. Being hospitable, what does Jesus say? I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Just as you did that to the most vulnerable, the most hungry, the most scared, the most in need, you did it to me. So even if some are stuck in a Sodom mindset, other people do follow a God who makes travelers a divine priority. Some people, they get so worked up about patriotism, and there's nothing wrong in the world with the love of country or love of flag, nothing at all. We celebrate those who stand up for our safety and promote our best values. Amen? Amen. Patriotism is good. Until it blinds us from something better. Money is great until it blinds us from love. Power is great until it blinds us from humble service. Some people get so viciously blinded by this idea that we are better because we are us, which is awesome at the Olympics. I mean, I love cheering at the Olympics. But when it comes to real people in real life who are used as targets of aggression and hate, real people tossed around in this symbolic warfare, real people who are God's priority, some people on Ruth's day, I guarantee you that the other women who gleaned at Boaz's farm, they resented her just for being there. They probably complained that those Moabite women were stealing their jobs and taking handouts, and they're lazy, and they wouldn't learn Hebrew. And we didn't invent any of this nonsense in our day and time. It's been around, foolish and wrong-headed, every time it gets blathered for the history of humankind. And God, every time it was said, just rolled God's eyes. How can you think that you were once that way? But then these women, they must have really hated Ruth. For Mary and the boss. She married Boaz. It's his farm. Those Moabite women, they're so promiscuous and the dirty and the dime, they're illegal. And how else could you explain her succeeding when we're failing? And we should cut them off and send them back and keep them out and take care of our own Israel first. If only there was a Messiah who would make us feel important by making them feel pain. And God gets a little more angry. And then eventually, even if they had accepted Ruth a little bit when she has her son, when she gives birth to what would become David's grandfather, Jesus' ancestor, who did the women congratulate from the story? They congratulated Naomi. I'll read it again. He shall be a restorer of life to you, old woman. Naomi. And you go back and read the whole thing. Ruth gives birth and disappears from the story because even if she did something great, she ain't one of us. To some people, that's common sense. But to the God of uncommon sense, the divine priority is on the refugee. So David, third generation.
generation immigrant who wrote poetry and made instruments and found God in music. Is he Hebrew? Is he Moabite? Is he mixed? Does it matter? Is he okay because his family had settled there long enough and he can trace his dad, can trace it back even further? Did, did David ever go back and learn Moabite songs or look up Moabite uh, recipes and wonder about his great grandmother? Even later, when when Israel had conquered Moab, David installed some taxes on those folks. But did he ever do anything to make it easier for the life of people like his great grandmother? Do we, we have a democracy, do we ever affect policy in order to make life easier on people uh, like our ancestors? Do we ever honor, if we're a different kind of weed, do we ever honor Native American songs and traditions that were here so long before us? Do we make up silly formulas for who matters more based on where and when their ancestors came? prop up silly labels and sillier lies about who's invading, and in so doing, do we prop up dangerous ideologies that threaten real lives, or do we include the other? Because God puts a priority on that, because we were once other, because we are told to live without fear, without hate, with trust, with love, do we follow God with our hearts to care for the refugee, to follow God with systematic wisdom to create conditions for their lives to be safer? Do we follow willful Ignorance of despotic racists or the faith of a brave young woman trying to make her life better, trying to provide for her family, trying in any way she can through whatever hardship she faces just to survive. Which side is God on in that story? Which side is God on?